Hi, welcome to Guitar Boot Camp. By the end, you'll be so confident with the guitar that you could be hanging out with the pros and they'd be like, hey, this guy, this guy knows guitar. Yeah. Sound good? Uh, good. So we're gonna be starting from the very top, so bear with me if you're like, I already know that's a guitar. Because things will get more complex as we go, but it's important to really make sure we know all the basics so the harder stuff later makes sense. Guitar anatomy. So guitars come in many different shapes and sizes. There are three main classifications, acoustic, electric, and classical. We're gonna be focusing on acoustic and electric because they're approached more or less the same way, whereas classical isn't. So the basic guitar parts you should be familiar with are actually similar to something else. That's right, a giraffe. So you've got the body, the neck, and the head stock. Now, unlike a giraffe, guitars have a nut, tuning machines, also called tuning pegs, the fretboard, which is on top of the neck, Frets, which are on top of the fretboard. Now, like a giraffe, guitars have spots along the neck. Those are called inlays. On most guitars, they're dots, but sometimes they're other shapes like diamonds, squares, bird. And they used to help you quickly find frets while playing because without them, where's the 13th fret? Uh, I don't- Me neither. But with them, it's here, right after the double dots, which mark the 12th fret. Now onto the body. They all have bridges, which support the strings, and most have pick guards, which guard from picks. Now, where they differ is in how they produce sound. For example, an unplugged acoustic sounds like this. Nice. Whereas an unplugged electric sounds like this. Not literally, they do make a bit of sound, and then they have pickups, which pick up the sound and send it to the amp, which amplifies it. But the acoustic, on the other hand, has a sound hole. Do you know what that does? It's a, it's a hole for sound. That's right. Tuning. So in the age of modern technology, you get about a dozen apps that can help you tune. But you probably only need one. <laughs> but in case you're ever without a phone, you can buy an electronic tuner or a piano. And then you can tune the strings in reference to the keys. Another option you can do is relative tuning. That's when you tune the guitar to itself. Basically, working down from the sixth string to the first string, or the fattest string to the skinniest string, play the fifth fret on one string, and then tune the string below it to match the pitch. Except for tuning the B string, which you match with the fourth fret of the G string. And by the end, you should have a guitar that's perfectly in tune to itself, and nothing else on the planet. <laughs> Before you play. So, guitars are actually designed for humans. So whether you're sitting or standing, the way it naturally falls is basically how it should be. But just in case, generally, you sit down to practice and stand to perform. Unless it's a really serious performance, then you sit on a stool with a spotlight. So we'll start with sitting. Place the body of the guitar on your right leg with your right arm placed over it in a way that supports it so the neck stays parallel to the ground. Your left hand shouldn't have to support the neck in any way. And if you're standing and playing, you should use a strap and it should be about the same height as when you're sitting down. Slash. So fretting is what you do with your left hand on the fretboard. Each string produces a single note which changes depending on what fret you play. Higher on the neck's a higher note, lower on the neck's a lower note. If you play three or more strings simultaneously, that's a chord. Sometimes it seems easier to play a chord by contorting your body in weird ways. And it might be, but in the long term, it can lead to permanent, permanent injury, injury, which is bad. So I might over explain how to do it, but it's important. So make a loose fist with your left hand and put your palm to the sky. Your thumb should fall roughly in between your index and your middle finger. Don't overthink it too much and just make sure your shoulders are relaxed. Now, when you play a note, make sure your fingers come up perpendicular to the fretboard and not at an angle. This prevents injury, but it also prevents you from accidentally touching strings by mistake, which is worse. Now, your right hand is responsible for rhythm and there are two main ways to do it. Which will you pick? <laughs> Some guitar humor for you. With electric guitars, you almost exclusively use a pick and with an acoustic, you can either use a pick or finger pick. Finger picking, you use your thumb to play bass notes, which is strings six, five, and four, and your index, middle, and ring fingers are used to play three, two, and one, respectively. Now picks, they come in a lot of sizes. The rule is pretty much, the less time you've been playing, the thinner your pick should be. And the good news is, once you're used to it, it's easy to upgrade. So to hold the pick, rest it on your index finger and put your thumb on top of it, gently. You want your grip on the pick to be relaxed. So relaxed that it might fall out of your hand at times, but tight enough that it won't. And in general, if you're strumming or playing chords or rhythm guitar, use your elbow and wrist. And if you're picking, like just playing individual notes, just use your wrist. Play a note. So what's interesting about guitar compared to like piano, say you got Mozart in a room. What's up guys? Oh hey Mo. Hey, Mo. So with a piano, if you and Mozart are both to hit the same key and only one key, it will sound basically the same. But now say we got Jimi Hendrix. Hey fellas. Hey, hey Jim. Hey, Jim. So if you and Jimi have the exact same guitar with the exact same setup, if Jimmy plays a note, it might sound like this. Thanks, Jimmy. Now, if you're new to guitar and you play the same note, it might sound like this. It's different. 
And that comes down to experience, knowing how hard to press, finger strength, and even your picking hand. But as a general rule, you wanna press down as lightly as you can, but still get a clear tone with no buzz. So the goal is to have as little string tension as possible. The way to do that is say you're playing the third fret on the sixth string. And by the way, playing the third fret means to play in the third box. Now in the box, you wanna place your finger as close to the third fret as you can without actually touching it because that's where the string has the least tension. Also, electric guitars have lower actions than acoustics, which means the strings are closer to the fretboard, which also means less tension. Okay, time to play a note. You ready? Huh? Play this one. Um, uh. Oh, that's tablature. Basically how you read them, the bottom line corresponds with the sixth string, the thickest string, and the top line with the first string, the thinnest string. And the other lines in between are the strings in between. And the numbers that are on the lines are what fret you have to play on that string. A zero means you play an open string, which means you press no frets. Chords. So a chord is when you play three or more notes simultaneously, which on guitar is playing three or more strings simultaneously. There are all types of chords, but the ones you absolutely have to know are bar chords. I'm kidding, it's open chords. Open chords are chords that consist of at least one string that's not fretted. Here's an example. That's not how, that's a chord diagram. How you read it is picture a guitar up against a wall and that's it. So with everything we've learned in this video, try and play this chord. And if you're gonna pause, here's some chord charts of chords that you should be familiar with. And then once you get these down, you'll officially be done with guitar boot camp. So congratulations. Thanks for watching guys. Let me know if I missed anything or maybe you can just say, hi, nice video and then uh, that that also means a lot. So, um, thanks guys, and I'll see you again soon. Bye. Uh, and thanks to my patrons, of course. Bye.